Detective Bats is on the cases we try to solve. Private Eye, a Patreon pick nominated by Mark S. Thank you, Mark, for nominating today's game. Let's go ahead and take Private Eye, which has some really awesome label art. Let's pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system and see how it goes up today. Let's go to the game. Private Eye was published by Activision and according to randomterrain.com was most likely released in March of 1984, coming out right in the middle of the US video game crash. It was programmed by Activision co-founder Bob Whitehead, who also programmed the fun baseball game Home Run for the Atari 2600, which I reviewed back in episode 161. I'll try to remember to link that review in the description below. The manual opens with the following. Sacre bleu, I am the great French private eye Pierre Touche, and I need your help. I've been summoned to capture the ringleader, Henry Lafiend, and turn him over to the police. But wait, we first must find the evidence against him and the stolen property. There are five cases pending, each with its own statute of limitations. A case is closed when Lafiend is apprehended and booked, so hurry. Study the files below, grab your trench coat, and meet me at precinct. 2600. I'll be waiting for you. Private Eye is a multi-screen action adventure game for one player only with five different cases which range in difficulty. For the controls you drive and direct your jumps with the joystick and press the button to jump your car while you leap up. The left difficulty switch is your car's cruise control. A maintains a fast speed, B maintains a slow speed. The right difficulty switch controls the car's jumping. By saying it to A, the height of the jump is controlled by the length of the time you hold down the red button. Saying it to B causes the car to jump to its maximum height with every single press of the button. This is one of those rare cases where I recommend using the A selections of both difficulty switches. No matter the case, you will have a limited amount of time to find pieces of evidence and stolen objects, usually two per case, one at a time, and bring each of them to a different expert to have it verified. For instance, instance bringing a gun to a gun store or a button to a tailor and then capture Levine and bring him to police headquarters. The cases can vary in time, ranging from 2 minutes to 20 minutes, and the city you explore can range in size, from 32 blocks to 248 blocks. However, it won't be easy. Falling flower pots, falling bricks, flying birds, scurrying mice, and potholes can slow you down, costing you precious time. You can also encounter solid yellow barricades you can jump over and striped barricades of which cannot be jumped over. Some screens have shortcuts in the middle you could take by pressing up, but some of them are dead ends. To find evidence or stolen objects, you must touch questionable characters who have question marks over their heads. If they have a piece of evidence, it will show up in the top right portion of the screen. However, thugs will throw daggers afterwards, and if you are hit by a dagger, you will need to backtrack until you find the evidence once again. You can find the evidence in any order, but if you find a second piece of evidence while holding another one, the first piece will disappear, needing to be found again later on. If you have all the evidence verified, you can search for a La Fiend, but once captured, daggers can set him free. None of the cases are randomized, so getting familiar with the locations is vital. As to solve a case in time, you will need to be very efficient and avoid most of the obstacles. When the game was released, if you solved the third case, you could send photographic proof to Activision to get the Super Sleuth patch. Scoring wise, you can not only earn points, but you can lose them as well. You lose one point for every moment you're on a pothole, 100 points if you're hit by a brick, you lose 200 points if you're hit by a flower pot, 300 points if you're hit by a rat, 400 points if you're hit by a bird, and 1000 points if you are hit by a dagger. You earn 100 points for every questionable character you touch, 5000 points if you get some evidence from him, 15000 points if you get a stolen item from him, 10,000 points when evidence is verified, 20,000 points when the stolen item is returned, 25,000 points for nabbing Lafiend, and 25,000 points again for booking him at police headquarters. Graphically speaking, this game is a solid looking game with a nice large city to explore. The music and the sounds, while not groundbreaking, are very well done. Family friendly wise, the game would most likely get an E for everyone rating if released today. Currently at PriceTrying.com, the game has a value of $15 loose, $45 complete, and $68 new. I also saw that a patch seems to be quite rare because one sold on eBay for over $400. So what do I think of Private Eye? This is a great game. In a way, it reminds me of two of my favorite games on the 2600, Pitfall and Adventure. Like Adventure, you must find and move objects to the correct location. And like Pitfall, you move in a horizontal, multi-screen world 
where in order to complete it, you must use shortcuts and have little time to waste. Having five missions also gives you quite a bit to do. You don't have to be perfect to complete a mission, but you do have to be close. This means learning the best route is crucial and will take some time. Thankfully for me, a guy who doesn't have a lot of free time, there are walkthroughs out there online. Although even if you do know the best route to take, it still takes time to practice it and pull it off before the timer runs out. Currently I've passed the first two cases and I'm having a blast trying to complete the third. Private Eye is also a very nice looking game and it features a very large world for a 2600 title. I will say that the controls, especially the jumpy, take a little bit to get used to. As a matter of fact, I still have trouble at times timing my jumps for the jumpable barricades. But nonetheless, this is a fun game that I highly recommend to 2600 fans. So where am I going to rank Private Eye? This one's going in my top 20. I do like Frogger a little bit more at 19, but I will give this the edge over the enjoyable Millipede at 20. So the 252 games are now ranked for the Atari 2600, Private Eye is sleuthing around at the 20 position. Private Eye is a fun and unique action adventure game for the 2600, but that's just what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on both the Facebook and the Twitter and click the bell so you don't miss any future videos. At this time, I'd like to thank Mark S for his generous support on Patreon. If you think these videos give you at least $1 per month of information and entertainment, please consider joining my supporters at patreon.com slash gamer. Not only will you help keep the show going, but you may also get a chance to nominate and vote on games for me to review. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Take care, especially when jumping your automobile.